Entrepreneurs can get stuck in their head, challenged by their thoughts, the voice in their head, and their beliefs. We chat with successful entrepreneurs who share their journey and the lessons learned along the way. The Ad Valued Entrepreneurs podcast is edutaining, leaving you with actionable advice to transform your life and create a thriving business that aligns with your values and goals. Our conversations are for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from their work so they can live the life they desire. You deserve it. It is possible. It's time for you to add value. This episode is brought to you by the newly released book, The Entrepreneur Mindset Shift, Growth Characteristics of Success by Robert C. Peterson. Available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at addvalue2life.com slash shift. Our guest today is Frank Sinclair. Frank is the Chief Encouragement Officer for Dream Again, LLC, a coaching, keynote speaking, and training enterprise. His primary focus is entrepreneurs. He was awarded the Colorado Random Acts of Kindness Award in 2019 and the Most Influential Networker Award in 2020. He's a three-time author, Air Force veteran, and he has changed his life and the life of many others through his company, Dream Again. And now he is changing coaches' lives through the Dream Again Coaches Collaborative. Frank Sinclair and I have a great conversation about starting from nothing, building a business that changes lives and impacts the world. We discuss building great relationships and adding value to the world. And it all begins with love. Love for yourself and then love for others. Well, Frank, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just looking forward to a great conversation, just learning about you and your entrepreneurial journey and all of your success. Well, thank you, Robert. It's so good to be on your show. I, I heard a good friend of mine, Beata, was on your show. I, I think she actually introduced us, although we kind of connected on LinkedIn about the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, well, so normally we start out and just have you share, you know, a little bit about your background, your your military service, your your corporate experience, and then transferring, you know, jumping into entrepreneurship. All righty. Well, I'm from a small town in North Carolina, is where I was raised, and I'm so old, Robert, that I was raised in segregation, so my schools didn't integrate until I was in the eighth grade. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we grew up as sharecroppers working in the tobacco fields and the cotton fields in North Carolina, and I'm the second of uh, 15 children. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I normally get a wow on that one, that's for sure. <laughs> I barely could handle two kids, so your mom must be a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was. She's gone home now, but yeah, she was an incredible woman. Yes, indeed. But anyway, grew up in that and um, uh, obviously had some uh, uh, emotional touch points in my life of feeling less than not as good as other people and et cetera. So that was just the way I was raised, but I was a great student in school, uh, made great grades, but no one ever counseled me that I could go to college. So I didn't stand that to even be an option. So I enlisted in the Air Force to escape my upbringing. Hmm. And that's how I ended up in Colorado because Peterson Air Force Base was my first duty assignment as an 18 year old. Nice. <laughs> nice. yeah. I uh, I enlisted in the Marine Corps, and that was just to, uh, well, because I'd let myself down in high school and didn't care enough to uh, to keep my grades up to go to college, and so the Marine Corps was was my best option. And and a group of friends that invited me and said, "All right, let's do it." And so <laughs> so we joined the Marines and uh, left three days after high school graduation because the recruiters didn't want us to get in any trouble after school. <laughs> Where, where were you at? Where were you raised? I was stationed at Camp Pendleton, California for basically my entire tour, although I did I did some I did a trip to Egypt and then I also did a Westpac. So I visited about nine different countries, you know, with, on a naval ship. And so had a pretty incredible experience, actually. Wow. Wow. Well, four years. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Well, I spent eight years in the Air Force and um uh, I was doing gangbusters, man. I had my first white friend in my entire life here at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got the uh, and the Air Force was only 3% black when I went in. So you could go a whole duty assignment without seeing another black person. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a trip. It really much different than today. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But people were so great to me for the first time I realized that there were humans on earth that didn't care about skin color. Uh, didn't that was no obstacle to their friendship, no obstacle to they to them also helping me and mentoring me. And I and I did incredibly well. So I spent three years here, went back to a base in North Carolina for 18 months. Then I spent my last three years of eight years at Kadena Air Base, Okinawa, Japan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And in my seventh year in the Air Force, I became the second youngest person of my rank in the entire Air Force. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so my movement was quick. But here's what happened to me, which wasn't so fantastic, Robert. <laughs> I started hearing messaging. and It was almost like someone was walking right beside me, whispering in my ear. You're a fraud. You don't oh. do this. Who do you think you are? Hmm. And I tell you, man, it was so real to me. It felt like the uh, only thing that I could do was drink to try to get rid of the voices. Hmm. And drinking led to my sabotaging my Air Force career. Hmm. So I fell out the wagon so badly that they wouldn't let me reenlist. And uh, um, me, you know, the best laid plans of a drunk. I say, well, I'll just marry my Japanese girlfriend and stay here, right? Okay. <laughs> but the Air Force said, no, you won't because you can't discharge on foreign soil. So I had to come back to America to discharge. And when I came back here, I just made a, just had a wild hair and decided to come back to Colorado one last time on my way back to Japan and ended up in an old motel down on South Nevada and for three weeks. I did what any respectable drunk would do. I went out every night and got blitzed. And I woke up after three weeks. I had blown all my money, didn't have a way back home or back to Japan, rather, and ended up as a homeless guy here on the streets of Colorado Springs in wow. 1983. And I just, it felt like home, man, because to me, in my mind, it was like, sure, of course I would end up this way. This makes sense to me. Hmm. Look how I blown a promising career. Look how I grew up. Look at the uh, backdrop of my life. So I just integrated myself into the homeless community until one day a guy came through and asked me to tell my story to him. Wow. And he did, and he took me home with him. So in uh, July 1983, I was rescued by homeless from homelessness. Well, there's just there's so much in that, right? For even for entrepreneurs that haven't ended up as in homelessness, that that voice telling you that you're an imposter, that voice telling you that you know you're you're not capable of doing this, right? You don't you don't deserve this. You you haven't earned this, and yet you can look at look at their results and you can say, wait a minute, you're doing all right, right? And <laughs> and sometimes until somebody reminds you that that hey, what you're doing is okay. You know, I, I I caught myself in a similar position. It's it's been surreal with my first book coming out, and and I got to hold the first proof copy today, and and just the comments and the reviews and the endorsements that I've received. I'm like, are they reading the same book that I wrote? Like, <laughs> and I had to remind myself, yes, they are. Yeah. I you did write that, and and you do deserve deserve these accolades, and it's okay. To receive them, you don't have to downplay them and you don't have to downplay yourself. It's okay. And I have to, you have to turn that voice off. That voice still exists at, at every level of success, at every level of, of achievement. The voice just keeps coming back in there and saying, Whoa, you don't deserve that. I had a very similar end to my to my military career. I uh you know, overseas for six months, the, the only thing to do is drink or hire prostitutes and, mm -hmm. and I chose drinking. I'm proud of that. I, I, I but coming back home and, and drinking just just didn't uh, you know didn't suit well. I never got in major trouble, but the hints were there. I spent a night in the hospital, got stitches in my head, and got uh, had to go to to alcohol counseling there in the Marine Corps. And then I chose to get discharged because I'd I'd married my high school sweetheart. And then at the end of my tour, six month overseas, you know, deployment just destroyed us both. We both turned 21 while I was deployed and, and, 
and she became independent and didn't need me. And so I was not treating her well because I was a drunk. And yeah. so so I left the Marine Corps, came back to Colorado, and by the grace of God, met a young lady that was underage, under 21, not underage. She was 18. <laughs> but okay. she, Thanks for that. She <laughs> yeah, she couldn't go in the bars. And so uh, so for a, a period of time, I, I quit drinking because she couldn't go with me. And so it actually helped make a, make a huge difference for me. And so... Um, so I definitely understand that. Thankfully, my parents were here and I didn't end up homeless because I was practically homeless. I was living in a bedroom next to theirs and, you know, for for a little while. Um, and then we finally got a, a place of our own and happy to say we've been together 31 years now. So yeah, congratulations. Uh, I, I will, by the grace of Jesus and going back to church it is what really made the difference for us. So amen. So this, this person rescued you in July 1983. What's what happened next? Well, he led me to, as, as uh, funny you would say that, because he also led me to a relationship with Jesus. Mm. And uh, I, I went to church for the first time in my 26 years. Uh, I knew that that uh, that he was my Lord and Savior. So mm. that totally changed my life. I tell people, you know, I got a job immediately. But on the 2nd of July, 1983, I'm homeless in Acacia Park. On the 2nd of July, 1984, I'm the chief of the fuels division for Raytheon at the Air Force Academy. Nice. So in my entire life, the trajectory of my life and what I felt about my talent, skills, and abilities was changed because one people, one person looked beyond the obvious and gave me a chance. You know, it, it only takes one person to believe in us, one person to, and if we can just borrow that belief for long enough to believe in ourselves, um, I think obviously that's the, the power of a mentor, right? The power of somebody be believing in you more than you believe in yourself. And for just long enough for your self image to develop, that's so powerful. Yes. I tell my clients today, I say, you're incredible. You are an amazing human. And until you can believe that about yourself, I'll believe it enough for both of us. Mm, so good. <laughs> Indeed. And yeah, so good. So fuel man at Raytheon at the Air Force Academy, then then what? Then what? Well, I spent six years there. Then I went back to Bible college, uh, became a pastor for a couple of years. But at that point, my character did not match my calling. Ah. So, <laughs> it was just the truth, right? I and understand. I lead with the truth, brother. So, <laughs> yeah, so I was married to a young lady I met in church. Uh, we had two daughters and a son uh, at this point, and uh, we, our marriage was not going well. So uh, I ended up having an affair, uh, Robert, losing my church, uh, nearly losing my family. And uh, by the grace of God, they stayed with me uh, throughout that ordeal. And uh, I got a job doing leadership development and interpersonal communications and corporate life. And that became really kind of a touch point because I knew during that period of time is when I felt most alive, mm. when I felt like I was doing what I was put on earth to do. Oh, such and, a good feeling. Yeah, isn't it a good feeling? And you know, some people go their entire lives without ever feeling that. Hmm. It's a shame. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a shame because when you experience it and you feel it, you're like, whoo, this, you know, you just, you just, it just lights you up. Right. This is, this is what I'm meant to do. And then the people around you are, are invigorated and, and motivated by it. And, and great things happen, not just to you, to you, but to the people that you're serving and helping. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Leadership is service. So, you know, that's what I've always taught. Uh, servant leadership has always been what the touch point of, of, of my life and my teachings and my instruction are in life because you, you, you lead to serve. Uh, influence, as you know, Maxwell says, is leadership. So if you're not influencing anyone, if no one's following you, you're simply taking a walk. And <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> and you're walking alone. <laughs> exactly. And that certainly is a leadership. So, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned you mentioned nearly losing your family. So let's let's talk about the power of forgiveness. Mm. Well, let's do, you know, and I wish that that we had that 
as the ending scenario with my mm. family, I did eventually lose my wife after we were married for 20 years. Mm. Um, we, and that was 13 years after that incident. So uh, we went through a lot of uh, counseling and attempts to make it work and et cetera. It just didn't work, my friend. So that was, uh, that that was that was that so my kids for the first year uh of my divorce after my to my wife debbie uh they didn't talk they were screened from me so that was a very hurtful thing and a very long process that was 17 years ago now uh i've been remarried to my wife michelle now for 15 years we celebrated our 15th anniversary in november well, congratulations. Yeah. And from the healing thing that you were talking about, my ex-wife and I are friends today. She's friends with Michelle. Uh, my kids are friends with Michelle. And obviously, they love their mother, too. So there's no drama associated with all of that. And we have reconciled uh, because of the power of God to change lives. Mm. And that's and that's what matters, right? And obviously, in the moment of pain and in those first first period of time, you know, after a relationship is, is broken, um, it, it takes some time to, that first of all, for us to mature. <laughs> and second of all, for us to recognize that these emotional strings that we've, we've allowed to influence us. Um, and so helping reconcile that and cut those emotional strings and, and heal that relationship um, is so it's so important and it's important to personal development, but I think it's also important for entrepreneurs in their business and the business decisions that they make. Indeed it is. You need to walk the talk, man. If you're going to say that, you know, things are important uh, in your life and in the life of other people, you know, you have to demonstrate that in your own life. And I know a lot of people say, well, I'm not perfect. That's beside the point. No one's asking you to be perfect. We're asking you to be authentic, uh, uh, transparent and vulnerable with other human beings. So that means flaws and all you bring it to the table. But uh, that's where people respect and are able to engage in their own lives. So I didn't come about entrepreneurship the regular way. All three of my children are business executives in Denver. Where you, nice. yeah, and they are all C-suite uh, humans that do incredible work and are amazing business people. So one day I woke up about four years ago and I said, "You know what? What is this about? You know, I'm happy for their success. I'm happy that they're doing incredible work, but." what does that mean to me? Uh, mm. I mean, what's the common denominator around three children uh, operating at that level of business? And I had to look in the mirror and say, well, I'm one of the common denominators that were raised in my home. And the next day I got on the computer and I registered Dream Again, LLC. Nice. <laughs> I, I love that. I love the name. Um, one of the, so my business is add value to life. It's based on, you know, Paul's admonition to encourage one another and build each other up, right? Our role is to, to build up other people. And, and, and I, one of the, the job titles I've always tinkered with and, and want to incorporate, but it, it's never come to fruition is dream recovery specialist, <laughs> because I want to help people recover their dreams and dream bigger and and dream god-sized dream that require god's intervention to accomplish and and of course make a god-sized impact in the world um and so i love dream again llc that's fantastic yeah well thank you thank you well all that you just said is a part of our vision our vision is to uplift and inspire humans to be all that they were designed to be by leaning into that design and creating space for their destiny. Oh, that's real good. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. All right. So four years we've, we start uh, coaching, focusing on. So who's your niche? Who's your ideal client? Uh, entrepreneurs are my primary clients. Um, I, I coach entrepreneurs. Uh, I do have about five more mature businesses as well that's in my portfolio right now but yeah entrepreneurs i believe that i i received and obeyed the message that i'm supposed to 
uh, into the world of entrepreneurship and help uh, them unwrap their story because I tell people that the natural course of your story leads to your purpose. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to be brave enough to explore that in order to for that purpose to unveil because you get an opportunity to leverage your pain in the midst of building your business. So good. We are, we are so aligned. We are so like-minded. Um, I, I help, really try to help my clients unravel their story or make sure that the story they're telling themselves is empowering them rather than making them a victim of their life. Right. And so helping them transition to life happening for them rather than life happening to them. And, uh, and so love, love that transition of story. Love, love that idea of, you know, how, how do you view your past? How do you view yourself? Right. What is your self image, your self belief? And then what is the future future that you want? What is the future story that you're telling yourself that you're putting out there in the world? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it, no matter how you look at it, maturity comes to overcoming obstacles dealing with pain pains inevitable growth is optional mm, so do absolutely. you want to grow <laughs> then you're going to have to deal with pain because it's inevitable in life that it comes and my first book was dream again lessons on leveraging your pain mm. uh, where i took people through the different stories of my life and the uh, opportunities that the painful times in my life created for me help unveil for me and make me the guy that I am today. Mm, that's so good. So let's talk a little bit about that confidence, right? You mentioned that imposter voice in, in your Air Force career and that voice just telling you, hey, you don't deserve this. Hey, you, you, ha you can't have this. Obviously, now you've, you've gotten through that. You've pushed through that voice. But what allowed you to do that? Well, what allows me, so, so let's speak present tense, okay? <laughs> People say, are you still a, a, a do you are you still a saboteur? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's almost like the alcoholic standing up saying, my name is Frank and I'm a saboteur. <laughs> <laughs> of myself. <laughs> right. And I think by identifying that, at least for me, it may be different for other folk, but those urges, those things that create that space in my life haven't disappeared. What I have discovered is great mechanisms to be able to navigate through those times when I'm telling myself these stories or they want to come back into my mind. First of all, I have so much encouragement coming through my mind now that it kind of blocks out all the negatives. I don't look at news. I don't look at, <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't engage. I can't be an encourager of humans and ingest all of that stuff at the same time. So I am very, very, very intentional about what I allow in my mind space. Hmm. That's so important. Yeah. So let's talk about obviously character. You shared some, you know, so, some parts of your journey, some vulnerability. Let, let's talk about that character growth that, that you allowed to happen <laughs> through that pain. Well, yeah, it, when she, you know, it's, it's very important that, that I'm a truth teller, right? Mm -hmm. It's so right over my door as I'm looking, talking to you right now, is a plaque that says return with honor. Mm -hmm. Because every day I'm coming back and I have to look at someone that I love in the eye and have to be able to share a day that, and, and if it's not honorable, then that's not really a good day. So, mm -hmm. I am very intentional. I'm very intentional about, I have an office here in Colorado Springs, uh, meeting with women in my office, uh, that I always meet with female clients in coffee shops around about lots of people and et cetera. Uh, I only meet men in my office. Uh, there's step, there's fences and guardrails that you have to put in place. Because, the, as you know, the heart is a deceitful thing. <laughs> and it can really, really, and you, you have to really uh, deal with it from that perspective. So that's why I put accountable to people. I will coach myself. Uh, uh, those type of uh, accountability measures that I put in my life to make sure that my character aligns with what I say. Hmm. 
So good. Well, I mean, I think the first step is knowing your values, right? Knowing what's important to you and then creating those boundaries to protect that, right? To make sure that you're living up to those values and those standards. And uh, I don't think business talks enough about boundaries and, and the value of boundaries, right? We're so focused on this, this, this worldly idea of freedom, right? This idea that freedom is a free for all. And, and really it's not right. As a parent, I loved my children and my children had a ton of freedom, but I was able to give them that freedom because of boundaries that we put in place, right? You have to be home by this time. You can only go to these places. You can only do these kinds of things. Those boundaries protected them and saved them from doing some of the stupid things that I did when I was a kid, right? And and kids need boundaries. And, and now we've got parents that want to just say, oh, they're okay. We can just let them do whatever they want. That's the same thing. I need boundaries. I have I have had similar boundaries in my life. I spent 20 years in ministry and I had we had rules not to ride, you know, with a, with a woman in the car. We never met with women in our offices. Um, I never, you know, gave a, a woman a ride home. And and in the times when those boundaries needed to be flexed, I was able to call my wife and say, "Hey, you know what? Dr. Martha doesn't have a ride. I'm going to give her a ride down the mountain." And my wife knew, right? I called her before and after, said, "Hey, I just dropped her off," right? Mm-hmm. And so the boundary was in place and then the flexibility of my wife's trust. And of course she, she always was so nonchalant. She's like, you don't have to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I have to, this is honoring the boundary that we've created. And I don't want to break trust. I don't want to, right. to violate the commitment, you know, and, and, and the boundaries help you. Boundaries give us freedom. The boundaries we have because of our faith, the boundaries we have because of our values, those, those boundaries actually give us more freedom to operate and be successful because we're operating within the guidelines that we were created for. Agreed. I have nothing to add to that, Robert. <laughs> oh, he's, he's speechless. We will be right back after this short break. This episode is sponsored by the newly released book, The Entrepreneur Mindset Shift, Growth Characteristics of Success by Robert C. Peterson. Available on Amazon, or you can order a personalized signed copy at add value, the number two life.com add value to life.com forward slash shift. If you enjoy the show, please like, and subscribe, leave a review, tell your friends. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. All right. So we jumped from character. Let's jump to, to gratitude. How has gratitude helped you in your growth journey? Oh, my gratitude is such an important touch point of life, right? It's, 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 it's perspective. And I have a that's what living a jacked up life coming up in poverty and all of those things. Really, that's that's the leveraging of the pain that I'm talking about, mm-hmm. because it's not hard for me to be grateful because I know what I didn't have and who I wasn't. All of those things that create some special place for me every day to be so thankful for everything that's in my life. And that's mm-hmm. not material stuff. I'm just thankful mostly for the humans that God allows in my life. And, uh, um, you know, I, I get way more praise than I deserve. That's for sure. Which mm-hmm. kind of goes with the territory because I certainly get more scrutiny than I deserve as well <laughs> in my position Uh, of leadership in this community so but i'm just so thankful that the god is a god that gives uh more chances and opportunities oh absolutely Mm -hmm. so on that idea of of more chances and and opportunities let's let's talk about mentors you'd mentioned mentors earlier but let's talk about the value of mentors and then how how would you encourage an entrepreneur to to find a mentor in, in in the areas where they might need well, I'm a big networker, Robert, <laughs> big time. You know, there's uh, a lot of networking. Uh, I've, I've actually helped to found two major networking groups in Colorado Springs here. Uh, I'm well known uh, uh, the most influential networker in the region. Uh, so, you know, your tribe shows up, whatever you if you're looking for something, this is why. We go berserk. We see people say, how can they believe certain things that they believe, right? 
because they're looking for that. Right. <laughs> and whatever you look for, you find. So, Absolutely. And, and you can't talk people out of that, no matter how nonsensical it may sound to you. So, you know, it's the same thing. I see a lot of people saying, well, uh, I want to network and all they do is go hand out cards and et cetera. Don't open, don't uh, give any opportunity to sit across the table from other humans and et cetera. Friendships are built there. Uh, we call it relationomics, right? The mm -hmm. value that relationships bring economically to business. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe that you can upscale or level up a business without developing great relationship and no knock on your city but i tell people this as well colorado springs is an incredible relational city uh to build business here you can feel like you're backstroking in molasses the first year or two <laughs> <laughs> i'm serious because you people have to know trust and like you here in order for you to do it and that takes time but uh, the uptick of that is that people are incredibly loyal to you once you've gained that trust in our community. Mm -hmm. Denver's more transactional than it is relational. And there's relational pockets there, but it's much more. That's in any big metropolitan city. People move very quickly. Uh, relationships aren't formed. Transactions are. So. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely there's definitely a, a plethora of networking groups, but my my entire business was built on face to face networking prior to March of 2020, mm -hmm. and so so I I definitely understand the value of networking and relationships and one on ones and giving first and and adding value and you know trying to trying to help build up other people's businesses in order to of course you know I, I'm a huge Zig Ziglar fan right you get you get it you get you help enough people get what they want, you're going to get what you want. And <laughs> it's, it's, and of course I love Bob Berg. Bob's been on the show and, and uh, John David Mann was on the show just is just a, a week. It'll only be two weeks by the time this one releases, I think. Mm -hmm. And they wrote the go giver series. And, and those are, those are powerful networking tools, right? That the ideas that they, they teach. And so I'm, I'm a huge huge fan of adding value first, giving value to others. Um, I definitely am not a transactional fan. I hate marketing. I hate, I hate Facebook ads. I hate all of these things that, that the digital world is, as you know, has put out there for, you know, replacing the relationship model of, of building. And I think even online, I can build my business relationally and I can put content out there and I can build a, know, a community that knows, likes, and trusts without trying to sell them stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it, it came through very clear, Robert, your <laughs> stance. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably depart from you a little bit there in that I love social media. <laughs> I, I am a fan. Uh, and, I'm, not, I'm just not a fan of the ads. I'm, I, I use social media. I'm figuring it out, but paying somebody to run ads. No, no, that's, that's a, that's a rabbit hole that just sucks money up. <laughs> well, uh, someone's winning in that space because yeah, yeah Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't use ads either. So I'm not, I don't know if I agree with you totally, you know, because to me, it's not win or lose in all of these platforms, because no matter what humans touch, someone jacks it up. Oh, right? That's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> if a human touching it, something's going to get jacked up. So and that's Absolutely. the way. Yeah. So you can win in any avenue and you can lose in any avenue. So I, I just want to be a positive. I just want to be a positive voice. That's my my if I'm out on social media, I, I want to be a positive voice. And like you said, ignoring all of that, all that white noise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very good at ignoring that. We built uh, a community called the Be Encouraged Community. Oh, so uh, yes, for that, nearly 51,000 strong uh, wow. in 115 countries in every state in the union. We have over 100 admins monitoring it 24 hours a day. Wow. You buy, sell, or promote anything on that page. The only thing you can do is encourage other human beings. That's so fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Matter so of fact, powerful. you need to join us. Absolutely. I, I, 
I need all the encouragement I can get too. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about play and fun. How important is play and fun? Well, it's, it's good, but uh, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm probably not, I, I believe in work-life integration, not so much work-life balance. I think that's kind of a fable to be perfectly honest. I, with you. I agree with you. There's no such thing as balance. <laughs> that's right. Right. So yeah, we integrate and, and my work is fun. It really is. And my wife allows that to be fun for me and et cetera. So you know, I, I'm 65 years old now, so uh, arthritic hands and I can't do the athletic things that I used to. So we don't do a lot of that, to be perfectly honest. My wife and I are homebodies uh, when I'm not working or traveling. And uh, we just like to be in each other's space and our each other's company. And I read a lot. And I do. I believe the most powerful people on earth. Uh, read a minimum of 25 books a year. I mean, I don't believe that's scientifically proven. Right. <laughs> that's true. So I read a lot. I write a lot. I, I do a lot of content work. And uh, that's 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 fun for me. And hanging out with other human beings is fun for me. See, that's just a different kind of fun. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's fantastic. And so, yeah. absolutely. So let's talk about routines. You mentioned writing. Obviously, if you have a content plan and, and the content routine, but what other routines have helped you maintain your, your business and, and, and keep yourself going where you want to go? Now this pastor out of California and it's really kind of changed. And it's where I got my tagline be encouraged from. Uh, this brother wrote a book called the hope quotient mm. and, and, uh, Gosh, I extracted so much from that book that I said every morning, because he was asked himself, he, he's, a, he's a mega church pastor, and said, how do you lead? How do you go out? How are you ready to face the rigors of life every day? He mm -hmm. says, by being encouraged. When I'm encouraged, I can go out and encourage others. So I develop routines to do that. So I do as well, getting up, one of content posting. I post six to eight posts every morning uh, uh, on, on social media and they're encouraging, uplifting posts. So what do you think is happening when I'm posting? I'm getting encouraged, right? Yeah. Reading God's word is very encouraging for me as well as praying and, and uh, having a heart that's set on positive outcome and belief and faith and that things are going to go swimmingly every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I go out and those are my routines so that I'm encouraged when I go face other human beings. Oh, so good. You know, I'm obviously, you know, we're, you're familiar, the parable of, you know, fill in the cup, right? You gotta, you gotta fill your cup to overflowing so that you're, you're working out of a full cup. Um, cause you can't run yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, brother? <laughs> well, I mean, that's what leads to burnout, right? If if you yeah. don't if you don't fill your cup up and then you just keep giving to others, that's what leads to burnout and stress and anxiety. And so taking that time to have that routine that fills you up, right? Whatever, whatever it is that fills that, you know, fills you up, you you've got to fill it up before you start. And so yeah. I love that. That's yeah. really good. So so what inspires you? Oh, you do. <laughs> Uh, tonight being on being here with you you know you can see the joy in you my friend it is inspiring to me <laughs> to have the opportunity to sit here with you and uh uh you know humans inspire people that's why i, I i'm such a proponent of story mm -hmm. stories inspiration simon Sinek says that there's only two ways to move humanity you either inspire them or you manipulate them. Mm. <laughs> right? It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that's true. So my touch point every day is to create room for inspiration in other humans' lives. And mm. when their stories are shared, I'm inspired uh, all day long. This is what I do. This mm. is a part of who I am. And, and it just really, really, really keeps me energized. I, I love that. Um, obviously, helping people tell their stories is so powerful, right? And and so many people feel like, well, I don't have a story. Nothing's ever happened to me. 
And, and it's just not true, right? If you've been on this planet for more than a day and a half, <laughs> you have a story <laughs> that could change somebody's life. And 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 helping people see that, you know, your even the simplicity of your story could save somebody's life and, and give them hope and help them not feel hopeless or helpless. Yes. Yeah, this incessant comparison is so ridiculous in culture on the face of it. Mm. I think I think only a fool compares themselves, and, and this is no knock because we all do it. We're all foolish sometimes, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah, and compare our lives and our walk and our and our outcomes to other people, and that that really takes us down a rabbit hole of de of disaster and devastation because there's only one you. And, and absolutely incredibleness of it only you yeah well and and jesus tells us not to covet right and yet and yet we end up most people take that scripture and, and basically just think about it as you know don't covet their house or their wife but yeah. the truth is you can't cover their life covet their lifestyle either you can't covet and compare yourself to you know the car they drive or the things they do and really it's kind of the same thing as, you know, control. We think we can control other people, which that's just manipulation. And the only person I can control is me. And so the only person I should be worrying about is me. And so take 100% responsibility for me. And guess what? I just got to make sure I'm better than me yesterday a little bit, right? 1% improvement a day is, is pretty incredible progress. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing people tell me that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, if you do 1% a day, that's more than incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> right? Because that's a lot. Can you imagine? That's a cumulative of 7% in a week. Right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy numbers. Huh? That's crazy numbers, huh? It's crazy numbers. I, I tell people when they say that's the 1% rule of their lives, I say, I, teach me that. I want to learn how to do that and tell me how to measure that because I, I, I'm not 1% better than I was yesterday. <laughs> Maybe one 1,000th. <laughs> I was never very good at fractions. So it's... <laughs> me either. Me either. <laughs> one, one is the lowest number I can deal with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you a little bit now. We're gonna we're gonna switch gears a little bit. So, what, what's your most memorable date with your wife? Oh my! <laughs> I told you it was a challenge. The last one that I had. There you go. <laughs> I'm 65. I can't remember much past that. Well, as long as you can remember at least one. <laughs> yeah, Michelle's birthday is uh, January 9th, so. We we had a we we were doing a week of going out oh, for, to celebrate Michelle, right? And uh, and I actually took her, uh, gathered some friends together. Well, it didn't end up being a surprise because for some reason the surprise was blown. But it was nevertheless a wonderful time. Not only that, a guy who had seen one of my videos on LinkedIn, and he lives in Pueblo, happened to be sitting next to us. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So as he was going out, he had a waiter bring us over a hundred dollar gift card. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Wasn't that cool? That yeah. was so awesome. I know we've never met before. We still have never met formally, but wow. He just loves my content and and what I put out on LinkedIn. So what a fantastic gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's so cool. So so what has been the impact? Obviously, that's an impact of, of putting out content. What what's been the impact of being an author and, and having a having your book? Oh um, the impact of, well, I, I I'm more known, right? It creates more space for you. Uh my shift is that by October 30th, 80% of my revenue would be driven driven from speaking. Nice. So, yeah, I am going to uh, relinquish most of my coaching responsibilities. And uh, it also afforded me the opportunity to build what we call the Dream Again Coaches Collaborative. Nice. Uh, where we have 11 coaches uh, in five states so far that we're building an organization uh, so that our philosophy of coaching can go forward to the masses. Wow. That's fantastic. 
<laughs> yeah. Now we got to figure out how to take it international. <laughs> that's it. That's one of our goals is definitely yeah. vision. That's and we're going to release 10 books on coaching in the next five years. And we wow. released our first one in October called Your Personal Life Coach. Uh, that's available on Amazon right now. Uh, May will we'll release your personal business coach in All right. October, your personal health coach. Oh, I like it. <laughs> so obviously you've, you've been able to, you know, you recognize your kids success and, you know, four years ago made the choice to design your life around your business, your business around your life. Mm -hmm. what, what does that look like for someone to, to be able to design their life and business? It, it looks like, a human being, first of all, knowing what they were designed for. Guys, I can't emphasize that enough. It, it is a painful road to uncover design. <laughs> Your specific design on earth. I mean, and what you were put here for. So that's what it looks like for me every day. I, uh, Robert, I get to get up and go and do exactly what I was put on earth to do every day. Hmm. That's so in insane to me. I can barely believe it, right? And I believe this is so true. And this is why we have the great resignations and all these other things going on. COVID may contribute to that, but I believe it was going to come anyway because people, you are not energized to do things you weren't designed to do. Hmm. And almost the majority of humans are getting up every day working outside of their designs. Mm. So no wonder it's draining. No wonder it's burnout. No wonder it's all of those negative things that we think about. Because when you can't lean into your design, you would never get the energy or the reserve or the reservoir that you need to carry on if you're not doing what you're designed to do. Mm. So powerful. Yeah, I mean, they're stuck in that rhythm, right, of, you know, wake up, go to work, come home, go to sleep, wake up, go to work, come home, go to sleep. And, and so many of them feel like they don't have an option. Yeah. They don't have a choice Yes, and they're, and they're stuck. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand it. Listen, I've, I did over 40 years working for other people. Some were in the midst of my design, but the roadblock was I couldn't be creative I couldn't bring forth ideas that were mine unless they passed through the insane litany of, of uh, scrutiny uh, <laughs> that goes along with business and et cetera. And I had to do it. You know, I have three kids that had gone to school. You know, someone had to pay, <laughs> right, and et cetera. So all of those things. And plus, I had an incredible amount of fear and insecurity mm -hmm. about stepping into that place anyway. I didn't believe that I was worthy of that. Of course, other people can do that. But I'm Frank Sinclair. Now, do you know who I really am? Mm -hmm. right? So I thought I was very fortunate to be maybe making uh, a decent amount of money. And one of the reasons I never went to work for a ministry, because, uh, uh, and I'm going to be honest, you know, I, I've done things in church and volunteer and still do. Uh, but don't, I don't work for them because it disappoints me. And I know I'm not the, the pinnacle of righteousness myself, but at least I know what a secular boss wants. See, they want production, they give me back, right? <laughs> There's no gray area or anything in between. If I don't produce, I'm not going to make that money. So, so I wasn't disillusioned that way and my audience today even though everyone that works with me knows i'm a christian there's no roadblocks to whom i work with mm. or for i just love human beings ah. <laughs> love love that right i just that opportunity to just just yeah we're we're all human beings let's let's start acting like we're all in the same we're all in the same planet <laughs> yes and we're all trying to do the same thing we're all trying to live our lives, take care of our families and, and live out our purpose, right? Yes. Make an impact in, in the world in a positive way. What human being couldn't identify with that? Exactly. Uh, exactly. Later for the pretenses, right? Let's, and that's another thing, because if you're carrying the burden of, uh, of, of 
of trying to be something that you're not. And mm -hmm. both of us know how that feels. I mean, right? that's hard work. <laughs> It really is trying to live a life. As you mentioned before, there's no freedom in that whatsoever when you're walking around trying to pretend. And then because I came from insane insecurity, I mean, I'm, and I'm still an insecure human, right? I'm not saying I've overcome insecurity. <laughs> that, that doesn't even make sense. So <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't. But it's being able to recognize where your insecurity is and walking in an authentic life and mm -hmm. people love me because i am just authentic and i there's no duplicity michelle will tell you i'm the same guy here that i am out there that i am anywhere else what you see and is what you get <laughs> nice so let's yeah. talk about those insecurities let's talk about how how do you push through and develop the confidence to 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 be the frank sinclair that speaks on stages and and speaks in these networking groups and stepped out on his own yes well uh, affirmation helps right <laughs> it really does and i've been affirmed i i once again i believe that i've gotten more accolades and praise than i deserve and and uh, that's just part and parcel of where you and i walk and and what we do so uh so that and it's recognizing giving people permission to say you know what frank mm, that didn't sound quite like an authentic <laughs> frank that i know right <laughs> sound like you're a little bit covering up sound a little bit defensive there frank and stuff and giving people permission and i do have people in my life that call me out good i'm so thankful for that that you know what uh, that didn't that did that does not jive with whom you say you are <laughs> that's important to have yeah yeah because we always have to lean back on to that and nobody ever we don't we, no one ever arrives i don't even know what that means i don't even know right. where, where where is that place yeah how do you get there and how do you know when you're there <laughs> you well, we have this misnomer that, you know, huh? they, we have this misnomer that they've made it or they've they've, they've arrived or they've yeah, this idea that there's this place and and people are just striving for that thing that's just out there rather than enjoying the journey. Yeah. Enjoying the day that's present right now because this is the only day you've got. There you go. There you so go. Yeah. enjoy this, enjoy this one. Enjoy this moment, right? One moment at a time makes a pretty, pretty good life, right? It's yes, it does. It, All right, Frank, what's what's the big dream? You mentioned the coaching collaborative and some of those things. What What's the big dream? The big dream is just to create space that creates space for humans. Mm. That's the big dream, because if I could ever, you know, we have a great big uh, uh, compelling vision for the Dream Again collaborative and for Dream Again uh, itself as a business. And it is that we reach the world with authenticity and we reach the world when allowing people to be whom they truly are. Ah, that's so good. Love digging out purpose and helping people discover what they were created to do. Yes. That's so powerful. All right. You spent an hour having coffee with one of those young entrepreneurs and you want to leave them with Frank's words of wisdom. What would you share? Well, this is what I do, sir, actually. So, uh, yeah, I go, you know, uh, J Joe, <laughs> you are an insanely amazing human being. You, do you have any idea, potentially, you'll never reach your potential here on Earth, hmm. but how would you like to dig a little bit closer to it? How, how much would you like to inch closer to that potential that lies inside of you that you've never discovered you know we can go on this journey together or if not with me with someone else i don't care how you get there i just want you to get there. the world needs what you have lying dormant inside mm -hmm. of you it needs it badly and you do your the world a disservice and yourself a disservice by not uncovering it let's get rolling oh amen <laughs> i like it Frank, thank you so much for taking the time to, to get on a call with me and hang out. And I sure appreciate your authenticity, your vulnerability and sharing your story and your heart for helping people. 
Yeah. Likewise with you, Robert. Yeah. Keep doing great things, my friend. If you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, or leave a review. We have a free gift for you at addvaluemindset.com. That's addvaluemindset.com. We've collected some of the best mindset secrets shared by successful entrepreneurs on our podcast, and we want to give them to you for free. addvaluemindset.com. In our next episode... Phil Simon and I discuss the power of a dream and self-belief to make it come true. Phyllis is an action taker and she shares how she is making her dream happen even when she has no idea what she's doing. It is a great conversation about belief and the power of action, putting her dream out there and watching the universe make connections for her next steps.